But the reason magnesium is important is what we found through research is that there is a direct proportional relationship between the level of magnesium in the cells and the glutathione level and activity in the cell. Hi, I'm Dr. A, and on this channel, we talk about medicine, health, all things integrative therapies, answer your questions, and a few other things. Today, let's break down a super common question that I get, and that is, you have a playlist on glutathione. You talk a lot about glutathione as one of the primary antioxidants, but the other thing that I've heard you say is glutathione has to be recycled. Can you tell us why and what your top supplements that help to recycle glutathione are? Great question. So let's break it down. First, glutathione is part of the core triplet of redox substances, vitamin C, vitamin E, and glutathione. At their base, they help protect our cells from oxidation, free radicals. They help to regulate certain parts of the immune system, and they back each other up. And that's why we always say those three come first, and then all the other antioxidants that you can use that are much stronger or different or whatever can go on around them. So it's not one is better than the other. It's just your body is set up biochemically to have these three working together. So when we think about recycling, that's beyond its friends, vitamin C and vitamin E. And that is because glutathione uses a lot of nutrients to cycle. And what is the cycle? It's the redox cycle. When a free radical comes along and an antioxidant takes up the free radical, electron usually, it goes from a reduced state to an oxidized state. And then the free radical is usually neutralized. The problem is, in its oxidized state, I can't use it anymore, so I have to recycle it back down. Glutathione uses a ton of nutrients to help that cyclic process. So we're going to do a little countdown here of the top six, okay? So the first one, number six, and we have this as a countdown. I, I don't not like any of these. It's not like one is worse than the other. But Maybe lesser known is vitamin B5, which is also known as pantothenic acid. And people say, well, I've looked at the charts of glutathione cycling. I don't see B5 on there. It's usually not put on there. And that's because vitamin B5 helps in a peripheral way, as a couple of these other things will, with the uptake and management, you could say, of glutathione. So while it's not primarily involved in the cycling, B5 is very dependent with glutathione to get glutathione into a position to be able to cycle. Number five is vitamin B2. That'd be the riboflavin family. And this works in directly in the cycling action. And you have a oxidizing side and a reducing side. And so you have two B vitamins in there that help out. B2 is one of the primary ones. Number four is vitamin B3, which is on the other side, and that is niacinamide. Now, you can take niacin, that's the kind that makes you flush, et cetera, B, vitamin B3 that makes you flush. But niacinamide actually is closer to what we're trying to get, which is NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And so niacinamide, it's very inexpensive and it can be taken, and it balances the vitamin B2 on the other side of the cycle. So coming in at number three are two trace elements. One is directly in that cycle, and that is selenium. And the other is a step back, kind of like vitamin B5 was, and that's zinc. And there's a number of reasons why zinc is required. It's not right in the cycle, but it's right on the outside. At station number two is vitamin C because vitamin C is part of the outer recycling shell, if you will, of those three agents helping each other to uh, go back and forth. And then number one, which is not at all in the middle of the cycle, but it's sort of the grand master, if you will, and that is magnesium. And magnesium, again, you look at glutathione cycling, you know, on Google Images, you won't usually see magnesium. You also won't see zinc, you won't see B5. But the reason magnesium is important is what we found through research is that there is a direct proportional relationship between the level of magnesium in the cells and the glutathione level and activity in the cell. So the more magnesium deficient a cell is, the more glutathione deficient it is. And the more the magnesium rises, the more the glutathione activity and the level of glutathione rises too. So in people who are having trouble maintaining glutathione levels, uh, maintaining activity of antioxidants, 
toxins, things of that nature. Magnesium is something that we will check. We'll usually a red blood cell magnesium level, and if it's low, we'll make sure we raise that up because it's actually a core, if you could say, sort of a primary support to all of the functions of glutathione. So again, number six is B5. Number five is B2. Number four is B3 is niacinamide. Number three is selenium and zinc. Number two is vitamin C. And number one is magnesium. All right. Hope that answered those questions. Thanks for the questions. I'll see you all on the next video.